Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back uh, to this uh, course on uh, combustion in air breathing aero engines. So, uh, in the last uh, class we were discussing about the governing equations. So, as we discussed that uh, uh, we have we have discussed of course, uh, chemical kinetics in a very detailed manner uh, and we have discussed how the uh, reaction rate uh, changes depends upon various factors like uh, temperature, species concentration etcetera. But only that information is not enough because in a flowing system in a practical engine you have convection, you have diffusion and also you have other things you can have other things like uh, radiation uh, etcetera which uh, basically it means that uh, the, 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 uh, the, sp the combustion parameters like species, temperature this are also uh, affected by the flow, the nature of the flow inside the engine. Right, so to to couple the flow and the pro and the properties uh, like species, concentration, temperature, we need governing equations. And you have seen that how using the Reynolds transport theorem, we can go from the description of a system to that of a control volume, and we have derived the the governing equations for uh, uh, for uh, uh, we have described the uh, we have obtained the governing equations in terms of conservation of mass, which is the continuity equations and we have species equations, momentum and energy. And so, these are the equations that we have uh, as you see, uh, we have uh, obtained, we have obtained the continuity which is uh, dou rho d or d plus uh, divergence of rho v equal to 0, species uh, 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 equation, momentum and uh, energy equation of course. But as you see that, uh, that uh, these equations A are quite complex, uh, even though they do not look so complex, the thing is that uh, many of these parameters, many of these quantities like the diffusion velocity, uh, like the this quantity, the pressure tensor, uh, the heat flux, okay, um, body force, etcetera, many of these are unknown and we need to provide uh, auxiliary equations and constitutive relations to, uh, to close and to solve the equations, okay. So, for that uh, uh, these are the things as we have seen that we need to supply equations for diffusion velocity, pressure tensor, heat flux vector and reaction rate and uh, this is the reaction rate of course and um, which we need to uh, which we need to basically close these equations. And here is uh, the uh, this uh, diffusion velocity. Now, note there is a small connection with respect to previous class this diffusion velocity which is, is actually implicit in terms of the species uh, concentration gradient of xi, but here uh, there is a summation from summation over j. So, uh, that uh, this gradient of xi for the there is a gradient of the species concentration of the uh, of the um, uh, um, molar concentration of the ith species gradient of xi is essentially summation over j to 1 that is for all the species other than i is given by xi xj divided by dij which is the binary diffusion coefficient and uh, which we obtained in the if you remember in the previous transport um, phenomena class times vj vi plus this uh, uh, things arising out of gradient of p uh, gradient of t etcetera. All right, and of course this pressure tensor that we discussed, uh, which is the uh, the standard description. So this is the pressure, this is the bulk viscosity, and this is the stranded tensor, uh, of, uh, which uh, multiplied with the dynamic viscosity gives you the uh, the shear uh, 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 stress basically. Okay. And also the heat flux vector we have discussed uh, which also comes out mainly from conduction uh, gradient of temperature this is the thermal conductivity. Then also the, the heat flux vector can be affected through the different heat content of different species and also due to temperature uh, uh, also due to, uh, due to uh, molecular diffusion velocity and of course due to radiation. And then we have of course discussed reaction rate in great details and uh, this is the reaction rate formula that you see. And uh, uh, of course, one point important point to note is that this is units of gram per cubic centimeter, whereas uh, in the kinetics class, class we obtain reaction uh, rate uh, in terms of units of mole per cubic centimeter and this, this is the uh, difference that arises that we need to take into account the molecular rate of the species I. Okay, so, uh, uh, 
Once again note here there is a correction the summation of j summation goes from j equal to 1 to n instead of i equal to 1 to n. So, when uh, this thing is that uh, that of course, this uh, means that this gradient of uh, this uh, the of the concentration uh, uh, which can arise due to uh, due to this uh, difference of the uh, species diffusion velocities v j minus v i uh, and uh, due to pressure gradient and due to body force difference and due to temperature gradient. Now, these are typically negligible in a uh, we will neglect this uh, unless other unless this uh, specific situation arises, but mostly we will neglect this in, in combustion uh, or for discussion. This is also typically negligible that this is a sorted effect uh, arising out of temperature gradient and uh, we will discuss this in great detail. So, we will mainly consider that our uh, the, our species diffusion will mainly be concentrated into this region and we will neglect all these things unless otherwise mentioned. All right. So, uh, these are the different things out of temperature gradient, pressure gradient, body force and um, concentration gradient um, and temperature gradient etcetera. Now, uh, we will go we just we have already discussed this. So, we will not go into this uh, different things uh, how the heat plus vector changes. Uh, this is just a recapitulate and of course, we need the auxiliary equations like uh, P uh, we need the uh, equation of uh, state, we need the energy enthalpy relations and of course, remember that the total energy that we discussed is essentially the sum of the uh, enthalpy of formation plus uh, uh, is the sum uh, between the enthalpy of formation at temperature T0 plus the sensible enthalpy at temperature T with respect to the uh, reference temperature T0 uh, and of course, this uh, sensible enthalpy can be written as integral T0 to T times Cpi where Cpi is the specific heat of the ith species times dt. Okay. And then of course, uh, we frequently need to convert between mole and mass fractions because the species equation is given in terms of uh, uh, mass fractions whereas, your reaction rates are written in terms of mole fractions. So, here is how you convert it uh, x i is equal to y i divided by w i uh, divided by summation j is equal to 1 to n y j by w j and this is the uh, how to convert from mole fraction to mass fraction. All right. So, these are the things. And uh, then we simplified that if we assume that uh, this uh, is uh, we only consider this uh, the the only consider that the gradient of error can arise due to due to uh, uh, that only if we consider the concentration gradient effect on diffusion. So this is what we are basically uh, have left with here. You see that x i the x i was here. So the x i has basically spins with a summation over j. So the x i has come over here. So we actual equation was gradient of uh, x i is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n x i x j divided by d i j times v j vector minus v i vector. So, if since uh, uh, this uh, we have neglected other terms now the x i can escape this thing and it can come over here. So, when it comes in the downstairs uh, in the denominator it becomes log of x i and now uh, you can apply several simplification that if you can apply equal diffusivities then this becomes simple and then you can write it explicitly v i is equal to minus d ln uh, minus d gradient of ln uh, logarithmic natural logarithm of y i and this is the fixed law of mass diffusion. But a better assumption is that uh, we instead of uh, <coughs> instead of uh, equal diffusivity, we consider that d i j is equal to d i n, where n is the abundant species and this is a good assumption because you see that uh, that uh, of course, uh, in air we are considering air breathing com uh, combustion in air breathing uh, uh, in situations when the oxidizer is, is air instead of pure oxygen and when there is air the abundant species is of course, uh, nitrogen which is about 70 per 1 percent by volume in air and of course, the fuel mass fraction is very small and uh, my oxygen mass fraction is mole fraction is also small 21 percent by volume and so um, uh, mainly it is nitrogen and so we can think that all the species whether it is fuel, whether it is um, oxygen it is basically diffusing in a sea of nitrogen uh, essentially. So, we can consider this d i j is essentially d i n where n is the abundant species which is for example, nitrogen and then we can write that uh, that v i is equal to minus d i n where n is, uh, is a d uh, is basically the diffuse d i n is essentially the diffusivity of i th species with respect to the n, n, n th species which is the abundant species and then this uh, becomes gradient of ln y i all right. And then we depending on the situation we assume that rho d is equal to constant or rho squared d is equal to constant and this will become evident later. And we have also gone over isobaric assumption which uh, by which we showed that the uh, for subsonic flows essentially uh, we can consider this equation itself because the equation uh, uh, between a reacting and a non reacting flow the momentum equation this is essentially the momentum equation is not different because momentum is essentially conserved in chemical reactions. And the only difference is that when you have reacting flows your density changes right. So, that is how reaction uh, reacting flows are differentiated with respect to non reacting flows at least in terms of the momentum equation. But uh, what I want to say here 
here is that that uh, that order of one uh, uh, to uh, effect the order one acceleration you only need an order of Mach number square of pressure gradient and as a result um, your pressure is essentially the spatial uh, is essentially constant uh, within the um, uh, within your combustor. It of course drops uh, for a little bit for uh, in subsonic flows and it increases in supersonic flows for example. So, in a gas turbine engine you have a small pressure drop downstream in the combustion region downstream of the combustion region that is in the product gases uh, whereas in uh, a scramjet combustion you will see that you will have essentially a little bit of pressure rise uh, in the combustion uh, in the combustion gases all right uh, in the product gases essentially so uh, then we have we have considered that this is the background pressure p0 is equal to rho rt and uh, p1 xt is equal to the is the dynamic pressure and uh, then uh, we uh, need to basically uh, what we want to do here is that uh, uh, we want to uh, derive uh, a, a simplified set of equations uh, uh, for uh, diffusion controlled uh, systems and we will do that here uh, basically uh, um, let me just uh, do the uh, derivations uh, this is important and uh, so that uh, these are the assumptions that uh, uh, we will specialize to subsonic flows only and uh, only uh, four minimum uh, key processes will be included right. So, we will include unsteadiness, we will include diffusion uh, that is the uh, we will include the con mass and uh, uh, this will include species diffusion and we will include um, uh, thermal diffusion that is conduction. Mm, we will include convection and of course, we will include reaction because otherwise uh, if you do not include uh, diffusion or reaction then it does not really describe a real combustion situation. Uh, as you will see that in certain cases we will be able to neglect uh, convection uh, not of course, inside an engine, but when we were discussing about a uh, when we were discussing about a, um, about a simplified system for example, in a in a one dimensional non premix flame or a one dimensional premix flame we will be able to uh, neglect convection and uh, essentially this then the, the systems will essentially be a, a competition between your, your reaction and your diffusion and that will come uh, later. But anyways, so but we will not uh, go there right now, we will just uh, have uh, these four processes included unsteadiness, diffusion, convection and reaction and you will see that the derivation only involves uh, energy and the species equation which are uh, explicitly affected by reaction. So, uh, basically uh, the thing is that as we have seen in last uh, class, um, as we have seen in last class and then today also that uh, in the low Mach number limit your pressure really does not change and as a result your pressure gradient is very small. So, uh, your momentum uh, 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 which is uh, uh, rho u uh, times u even though that changes by a small amount will it does not really uh, uh, it does not really uh, uh, will will consider a very simplified um, uh, point of view for momentum. So, uh, uh, that that whatever the gas accelerates that can be computed through the uh, continuity equation and there is no really change of uh, uh, um, uh, 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 momentum uh, uh, as uh, the pressure gradient is small. So, uh, 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 will uh, there, there is actually you know, if you see that uh, that can be essentially explained from this isobaric assumption that uh, once again uh, if you go back this uh, uh, this this uh, in this non dimensionalized form if you have to change uh, create an acceleration of order of 1 this will be create this will be this uh, uh, pressure gradient will be order of uh, Mach number square that was the uh, thing. And uh, so, uh, of course, the flow accelerates in a, in a reacting flow as you see, but uh, then um, uh, this uh, will consider that this uh, uh, acceleration um, um, uh, can be uh, computed uh, um, uh, 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 this acceleration can be uh, computed essentially through the through the continuity equation uh, for the systems that we will consider and the momentum equation will not be really um, discussed, uh, discussed uh, explicitly in our derivation. So, this derivation uh, we will only include uh, um, uh, we will only include uh, the species equation and the and the enthalpy equation okay um, and uh, enthalpy equation we will see that it does not come explicitly we will actually start with the internal energy equation that we have uh, derived um, and then uh, from the internal energy equation we will combine this with the species equation to arrive at the enthalpy equation. So, that is what we are going to do first okay. So, uh, the equation that we have uh, 
if you see the equation that we have derived previously it was this. This is the rho times d, uh, this is the material derivative d e d t is equal to partial dou derivatives of with, uh, with respect to time over rho e plus divergence of rho v vector, this is a small v vector that is a bulk fluid velocity times the internal energy is equal to minus of grad q minus p v this means that the tensor has to be contracted twice plus this is the diffusion velocity. Now, what are the terms we can get rid of? This of course, we assume that there is no body force. So, this goes to 0. Okay. This can be shown to become simply P times divergence of V. What does now P is a scalar essentially. All right. So, then this becomes Whereas, Q vector that is the heat flux vector is equal to minus lambda grad T. This is a conduction term, right? This is a conduction term plus rho times summation i is equal to 1 to n h i y i v i. This is the species diffusion velocity. Okay. So, this is as you see that we have left out a lot of things, uh, but this is the most simplified form of heat flux vector that we can write at this stage. All right. And of course, as you have seen that uh, the V i is given by uh, uh, if it is a simplified system, if we use fixed law of mass diffusion, it is given by V i vector is equal to minus d i with respect to n times gradient of x i. All right. So, uh, that is how V i can be given or you, if you want to use the full diffusion equation, you can write the gradient of x i is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n uh, x i x j divided by d i j times v j vector minus v i vector also. All right. Now, uh, what you can do is that you can write E that is the internal energy is equal to h that is a specific enthalpy by minus p by rho. That is the definition of enthalpy h is equal to u, u that is E plus p by rho. Uh, of course, this is specific quantity, this is specific quantity and then if you substitute this into here and write that h is equal to summation a bulk specific enthalpy is equal to summation y i h i is equal to y is equal to 1 to l, then this yields That is, this is the transient term dou dou t of uh, uh, rho times summation y i h i plus uh, this is the gradient of uh, bracket sum density times summation y i h i plus v vector plus v i vector minus lambda grad t. I will explain this term in a second is equal to d p d t. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, transient term, this is the basically the convection term and this is a species diffusion term and this is the uh, heat flux crossing the boundaries. Uh, this is also the heat flux crossing the boundaries and that is carried over by the species diffusion velocity. This is heat flux carried uh, crossing the boundaries due to temperature gradient and that is equal to dp dt. All right. 
So, this is what we have derived, but you see here interestingly there is no reaction rate happening. So, how does the when does the reaction rate come in? Now, if you want uh, you can spare uh, so you can just pause here and uh, just think where does the uh, reaction rate can actually come from. The clue is that you remember that this is uh, this is uh, total enthalpy. So, total enthalpy of course, contains uh, uh, as we have seen that the total enthalpy H i is nothing but H i 0 that is uh, enthalpy of formation plus H i sensible right. So, these two things. So, now you can think that where does the reaction rate can come from and of course, uh, when you have invoked uh, oh, this is not enough. Uh, uh, now, we need to also include uh, mm, uh, the we need to include the um, uh, the um, species conservation equation in this one somehow. So, the species conservation equation is given by uh, this is of course, the energy equation and this is the this is the transient term and this is the essentially it will contain the convection term of the species y i v vector species convected to the bulk fluid velocity plus the species crossing the control surface um, uh, or the element here uh, due to the species diffusion velocity v i capital v i and that is, is equal to the reaction rate term once again this is w and not omega and this is goes from i is both equations go from i is equal to 1 to uh, n right. Now, what you can do is that now uh, you can multiply this equation on both sides by h i 0 and then sum over sum over from. Uh, so, this is multiply this equation with h i 0 and then sum over i is equal to 1 to n all right. If you do that what you will get is that. So, what we have done is that we have derived the uh, enthalpy equation and uh, we have also in a simplified form uh, from we have derived the enthalpy the total enthalpy equation from the internal energy equation and uh, we have simplified it uh, in terms of the we have neglected some of the terms we have, have a got a simplified uh, definition for the heat flux vector that is crossing the element element surfaces essentially element boundaries and then uh, we have obtained the species equation and that is also in a simplified form and then we have multiplied with the species equation enthalpy of formation and then we have uh, summed over, over from i is equal to 1 to n and this new species equation that you get if you subtract from the uh, previous enthalpy equation the total enthalpy equation you will get uh, what will you get you will get the equation for the sensible enthalpy right. So, you have a uh, just to give you an example we have you have got an equation uh, for um, uh, the governing equation for h i total and then you have got an equation for h i 0 and this is obtained by the which is obtained by h i multiplying h i 0 times y i and then the governing equations um, for that ok. And then this was the governing equations for uh, h i uh, s and then if you subtract with the between these two things um, if you subtract between these two things what you are left with is essentially the uh, equation for h i s because uh, because h i is s is nothing but h i minus h i 0. So, what you get is, is essentially you can you should do the derivations yourself I will just write down the final answer here mm, that is the equation that you get is nothing but this one density this is a very important equation because this is the equation that we use for all our combustion calculations and this is also the equation either this form or in a temperature form that appears. So, this is the convection term plus this is the rho times summation i is equal to 1 to n this is once again the enthalpy the sensible enthalpy that is crossing the system boundaries due to different uh, uh, due to different uh, species due to different uh, actually we will see that this is due to different specific heats minus lambda t is equal to d p d t minus now you will see the magic i is equal to 1 to n ok. This is nothing but the 
heat release rate. Why? This is your reaction rate is the species consumption rate and this is the enthalpy of formation. So, when you sum over i is equal to 1 to n you essentially get the heat release rate that we will see. And this is what is actually changing uh, uh, actually increasing the sensible enthalpy before and after after the reaction with respect to the state previous to the reaction. Okay. So, this is our uh, very important governing equations that is a species enthalpy equation and uh, of course, here H s is nothing but summation r is equal to 1 to n y i h s i. Okay. So, uh, this is the species uh, enthalpy equation that we have uh, derived. Uh, so, this is how you go from essentially uh, you go from uh, Mm, um, essentially you go from the internal energy equation to a uh, sensible enthalpy equation uh, and I would strongly encourage all of you to just uh, derive this equation yourself, it is not very difficult at all.